My last video was on Megatheropods, which I nicknamed the Dragons of the Past. For this next video, I'm going to be looking at Mega Ornithopods, which includes Iguanodonts and Hadrosaurs. For this episode, I'm going to keep the same general definition as with Megatheropods of any theropod, or in this case Hadrosaur, over 5,000 kilograms or higher on average body mass. And no, I will not be looking at exceptional individuals. These are average sizes. Also, for this video, I'm going to be looking at average sizes for each species, not genus. And yes, there is a difference. The first mega hadrosaur that I'm going to be focusing on for this video is Chronosaurus janiensis, which is possibly synonymous with the genus Parasaurolophus. This dinosaur is Chinese being found in the Yuliangzi Formation, which dates from the Maastrichtian 72 to 66 million years ago. Chronosaurus barely meets the qualifying mark at around 5,000 kilograms, so it's the baseline of a megahadrosaur. The next species is Hypsobema crassicorda, which lived in North Carolina. H. crassicorcarda is often overlooked by the other more popular species, H. Missouriensis, which only grew to around 3,000 kilograms as opposed to Crassicorcarda's 5,057 kilograms. Interestingly, Hypsobema Crassicorda lived in the same environment as a species of Dinosuchus, Dinosuchus rugosus, which was a megacroc. Next is Edmontosaurus regalis, which is one of the two species of Edmontosaurus that will appear in this video. Edmontosaurus regalis would have lived in a very rich environment, with ornithomimids, pachycephalosaurids, countless ceratopsids and other hadrosaurids, and even the tyrannosaurid albertosaurus. Although many sources about this creature will claim that it's around 4,000 kilograms, Edmontosaurus regalis, when scaling from several E. anectans specimens, was more likely around 5.6 tonnes which means that this species qualifies as a megahadrosaur. The next hadrosaur is a part of a popular genus, but an obscure species, Parasaurolophus cridocrystatus. P. cridocrystatus is actually very interesting, as it's known from possibly the largest hadrosaur specimen ever. A possible footprint that measures 91 centimetres in length believed to have been made by a hadrosaur in the same formation as this species, shows an animal that was likely over 20 tonnes. More on that later. Even without this massive footprint, the species is actually likely to be a megahadrosaur, as two other specimens with GDI analysis as provided average over 5,000 kilograms. Lanzhousaurus magnetens is likely the most obscure species of megahadrosaur in this video, with no iconic or popular appearances in video games, movies or TV shows, or even books. So it is really obscure. Despite this dinosaur's widespread lack of popular appeal, it was actually pretty big, rivaling triceratops, or at least smaller triceratops in size, dwarfing even the largest stegosaurs. Lanzhousaurus is also among the oldest megahadrosaurs, living 130 million years ago in the early Cretaceous. In direct contrast to the very obscure and relatively recent discovery of Lanzhousaurus, we have the very widely known and extremely popular Iguanodon, the species here being Iguanodon bernisartensis. Iguanodon has been known about for an extremely long time, first being named in 1825 and being discovered all the way back in 1822, meaning it's essentially been known about for over 200 years. This was the second dinosaur ever discovered, only being second to Megalosaurus, which was named in 1824 exactly 200 years ago. Most sources will put Iguanodon at between 3,000 and 4,000 kilograms, though these are likely outdated, and plus, they're based off younger, less mature specimens, with the actual animal weighing well over 6,000 kilograms. 
Speaking of really well-known dinosaurs, let's now look at Edmontosaurus annectens, which has a pretty large sample size of about 10 specimens. Rather famously, Edmontosaurus annectens was actually likely a contemporary of Tyrannosaurus rex. Although very occasionally a prey item for Tyrannosaurus rex, Edmontosaurus annectens was likely most of the time safe given group defence, as it was extremely likely this species lived in herds, and its extremely large size. Though averaging around 6,600 kilograms, Edmontosaurus annectens could reach well over this, surpassing even the largest African bush elephant males, with some specimens potentially hitting 14,000 kilograms. Now, most sources will claim that Magnapolia laticordis was the second largest hadrosaur, though this is doubted now, as there are still three that are heavier. Magnapolia was actually pretty closely related to Alorotitan, Hippacrosaurus, and Lambayasaurus to name a few, being found in Baja, California. Though not as large as the average Tyrannosaurus rex, this animal did rival its closest relative, Tyrannosaurus macrensis, being double the weight of an average white rhinoceros, or even the largest, and well above the average size of an African elephant. In the bronze place for the largest hadrosaur, we have the large Mongolian species of Sirolophus, Sirolophus angustorustris, which lived in Mongolia at the end of the Cretaceous. This species possibly exceeded 13 metres in length, weighing up to 11,000 kilograms, although the average would have been closer to 9 to 10,000 kilograms which still rivals even Tyrannosaurus rex in size. S. angustorustris actually has a cousin, S. osborni, from Canada, which only grew to around 3,000 kilograms instead of 11,000 kilograms. Barsbolia sikinski is another Mongolian hadrosaur, also living at the end of the Cretaceous and dwarfing the main predator of its environment, Tarbosaurus. Barsbolia lived in the Nemect Formation roughly 70 to 66 million years ago, meaning it was a possible prey item of Tarbosaurus, although being much larger, rivaling some of the sauropods in its environment in terms of size. Though once been believed to be 10 metres in length, this animal has now been upsized to around 13 metres in length, with an average mass of nearly 11 tonnes. This animal was killed during the KPG extinction event. It was massive. It lived in a popular formation. I don't see why it's more popular. And finally, we have number one spot, Chantungosaurus giganteus, which is the largest ornithopod, ornithischian, and non-sauropod dinosaur to ever exist, dwarfing even Tyrannosaurus rex itself. Given its likely fast running speed, the possibility and probability that it lived in herds and its overall gigantic size, Shantungosaurus was likely immune to predation as an adult from the Tyrannosaurid Zhujang Tyrannus, which only grew to 4,000 kilograms. It would be similar to a T-Rex attacking an Alamosaurus, possible but extremely unlikely and dangerous for the attacker. I'm not even going to say just how massive the size it reached actually was at over 15,000 kilograms. I'm just going to put some statistics up right now for you to admire. Overall, I feel like calling hadrosaurs deer after watching this video is a bit stupid, as they were more like cows or even elephants, at least in terms of overall size. Instead of calling these animals duck build dinosaurs, let's call them duck titans, or as I'm going to call them right now, the elephants of the Cretaceous.